The Mattress Professionals. From the Interstate Custom Kitchen Studio, it's the Howie Car Show on WHYN. Our show. And soon, insurance companies will no longer be able to deny coverage based on pre-existing conditions like breast cancer. Or charge women more just because they're women. We don't know. Uh, we, we haven't gotten on uh, the dry cleaning thing yet, though. I mean, I know that that's still, that's still frustrating. I'm sure. Who do you love? Mr. Fernstrom, uh, did you ever think you'd end up seeing, uh, saying something that would be quoted back by former President Clinton, who used it the other day? Well, I, I, I hope the people at Etch-A-Sketch appreciate everything I did for them. But look, Chuck, I, fair-minded people know that I was referring to the race, not the candidate. U.S. Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois points to the tornadoes as a sign of climate change. It's your money or your life. We are either going to dedicate ourselves to a cleaner, more livable planet, or we're going to pay a heavier price in terms of the loss of human life. Howie Carr. We're going to wrap up our debate now with the candidates' closing statements. Ms. Whitman will go first. Well, I'm dealing with Whore here, who sells his soul to APAC, who will say anything for the job. On the Howie Carr WRKO Radio Network. That last one was a debate last night in, in Connecticut for uh, Joe Lieberman's Senate seat. The the the, the, uh, the candidate, the woman, was calling a U.S. congressman a whore because he <laughs> because he supports Israel. Now they're not going to let her be in any more of the debates. One eight seven seven four six nine four three two two one eight seven seven four six nine four three two two. That's the toll free number of the Howie Car Show. If you'd like to join us here this afternoon, every weekday afternoon, and if you'd like to listen to the show on the internet, you can always go to our website, which is HowieCar.us. HowieCar.us. Sign up for the email blast. You'll always know where I'm going to be, wherever I am, and wherever I go. And you can also uh, find out where to send away for your free magnet. That's where I'll be appearing next uh, at, at my book signings, which actually will be the Lent Public Library a week from tomorrow, Saturday. And uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a new story uh, posted uh, very soon on the uh, on uh, HowieCard.us, a story about uh, uh, Speaker DeLeo and, and uh, his visit last night to Fall River, where he appeared at, uh, at a fundraiser for a local state rep who used to have ties to one of the leading... Uh, leading um, gambling organized crime figures in the community tim the bat mellow i think it's another indication that this the the investigation is over you know if the uh, if the speaker is willing to uh, to pose for pictures and we've got some of the pictures with uh this guy kevin aguiar who wasn't indicted he's a state rep he wasn't indicted but he he was named in the uh complaints uh about uh, the gambling organizations he apparently worked answering the phones now he's a state rep seems like a logical career move you know i mean he's you know usually though you get elected to the legislature and then you get into crime this guy was into illegal gambling and then he or allegedly and then he got into the legislature and, and bobby de leo just named two weeks ago in a federal indictment not indicted but named identified has went down went down last night uh, to westport and had a fundraiser with him it's god isn't Massachusetts politics great? All right. Uh, also, uh, you can also listen to the show at how, we'll, but we'll have a story posted on that along with a picture of uh, the speaker posing with the guy who was the member of uh, Mello's organization. Why? Why did they call him the Bat, Howie? Did it have something to do with a uh, with a, a flying mammal? No, they didn't call him the Bat because of a flying mammal. They called him the Bat because of a Louisville slugger. He was in prison for a while, but now he's out. Okay, you can also listen to the show at HowieCard.com, HowieCard.com. 
Uh, and also at HowieCard.com, you can take part in our daily Internet poll question. The daily Internet poll question is brought to you by Olson Cadillac of Woburn. Take exit 33A off 128. Go down about two miles to Woburn Four Corners. You'll see it up there on the right. The best Cadillac dealership in the region, Olson Cadillac. They have hundreds of new and pre-owned Cadillacs on the sale, on the lot for sale, and many of them have, many of the used Cadillacs have warranties of up to six years and or 100,000 miles. If you would like to check out what they have in stock online before you drive there, you can always go to their website, olsencadillac.com, O-L-S-E-N Cadillac.com. And today's poll question concerns the the uh, continuing scandal, and I should say cover-up, that NBC is, uh, is, is perpetrating. Is it a cover-up or a stonewall? I think it's a stonewall. An, NB an internal NBC News probe has determined that a quote-unquote seasoned producer was to blame for a misleading clip of a misleading. <laughs> That's a misleading way to describe it. A misleading cl clip of a 911 call that the network broadcast during its coverage of the Trayvon Martin shooting. The sources at the network who declined to identify the producer said NBC News executives did not know the 911 call was misleadingly, there's that word again, edited until news reports surfaced days later on right-leaning blogs including newsbusters.org and breitbart.com. The sources described the producer's actions as a very bad mistake but not deliberate, but not deliberate, really. Sandy, what's the poll question today and what are the results thus far? NBC says they did not intentionally edit the 911 call to they make didn't. Zimmerman look like a racist. Do you believe them? No, I do not believe them. We are at 50-50. How, why would you cut those words out of the tape that you're going to put on TV unless you were trying to make Zimmerman look bad, unless you were trying to inflame racial tensions. The network said on Tuesday that it would not release names of the employees involved. You know, they've never, they've never apologized on the air. They issued a press release so that all of us who, who uh, you know, go to right-wing websites and hang out there and, uh, and read up, or all of us who, uh, who, were, who were interested in uh, conservative uh, blogs, we all know what happened, but the average NBC viewer, your, your typical uh, Obama voter who believes the economy is really coming back because it really hasn't affected him one way or the other, has it, because he doesn't work, he or she doesn't work, they, they, don't, they don't even know that uh, NBC was trying to uh, stir up racial tensions, was trying to pull an Al Sharpton, who, by the way, works for NBC now, MSNBC, it's the same thing. NBC News staffers who have been working on the Trayvon Martin case for several weeks in Florida were at first in shock over the incident and later furious, another source who is an NBC reporter told Reuters. Public pressure has been building on the network to fully explain the incident, which critics charge has inflamed racial tensions in an already volatile situation. On Thursday, an NBC, a New York Post editorial characterized the edited 911 call as pretty damning evidence of willful misconduct by NBC News and suggested that racial violence could ensue over irresponsible news coverage. Television news veterans in New York said they were baffled over how the error, error claimed to be broadcast given the intense vetting of such a sensitive story would normally get at a major network such as NBC. They're baffled. They're baffled. No, I won't be at the Lynn Public Library tomorrow. I'll be at the Lynn Public Library a week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow. All right. 1-877-469-4322. 1-877-469-4322. The unemployment rate went down again this month. It went down to 8.2%. Uh, you know, NBC, uh, CNBC, the, another uh, one of the uh, uh, Obama lackey networks in the NBC stable, uh, they've got the pom-poms out. They're all screaming and cheering. It's, it's like uh, getting the, the, uh, the, the front runners at Chillville here to uh, predict the Red Sox are going to win the World Series. I mean, whenever there's any good news, it's like the Red Sox going on a one-game winning streak. They all think they're going to win the World Series. So, the fact is, though, that 
they they were predicting before the numbers came out at uh, 830 there's there's stories all over the place uh, from the AP unemployment uh, employment is expected to have increased by a quarter of a million <laughs> Oh, Obama is so great. He's so wonderful. Just tax and tax and spend and print money and drive the economy into a ditch. It's working. Well, actually, it's not working. The U.S. economy added only 120,000 jobs in March. That's half of what they were predicting in few minutes earlier before this news came out. Not enough to keep up with even normal population growth. Unemployment fell to 8.2% simply because many unemployed adults became discouraged and quit looking for work. This is the uh, United Press International. Concerns about the durability of the recovery, that should be in quotation marks, recovery, and health care costs when Obamacare is fully implemented make employers very cautious about adding to headcount. Factoring in those discouraged adults and others working part-time for lack of full-time opportunities, the unemployment rate is about 14.5%. Adding college graduates in low-skill positions like counter work at Starbucks and the unemployment rate is likely closer to 18%. 18%. I want to know, have you, uh, have, have you, do you know anybody that's quit looking for work? And I'm not talking about, you know, like EBT cardholders, you know, the uh, local illegal alien in your community who, who never planned when he got to this country. I'm talking about, uh, you know, people who used to have jobs, Americans who used to uh, work for a living, have they that have, that have given up? I want to know, are you one of those people? 1-877-469-4322. 1-877-469-4322. My wife has been saying for several years now, the mailroom manager, that, you know, when she goes to pick up the kids, she sees a lot more men uh, are now picking up the kids than, than you used to see in the 90s. They just can't, they, they've never, you know, they got laid off back in uh, 2008, 2009, and they've just never been able to get any kind of work again. And it's just, it's very difficult. And, and um, they, they, they just stop looking. And after a while, I don't, I don't know what you do after, after a while because you fall behind tech, technologically and, uh, and you, you, you uh, and you get older, and then you have these gaps, and, and it's it's natural for employers to be suspicious if they see a gap in your employment. So I want to know: Do you know people who've, who've quit looking for work? And uh, what, I mean, what are they doing? How are how are they getting by? What are, what are they uh, what are they doing to make ends meet? I know people that have, that, have, that aren't working that their their wives have. Uh, have jobs and the jobs used to just be for you know extra pen money and you know maybe have a little money for the college uh, college bills for the uh, the the older kids or or uh, they worked to provide health insurance while the uh, husband had a uh, had a had a job like maybe being a salesman where he where he worked on commissions rather than a straight salary and uh, now now that's the only that's the only uh, money that's coming in is that uh, is that second is is from the secondary job. And I tell you, this this is why uh, this is why these these government jobs are so uh, are, are so coveted. You know, I mean, uh, they'll they'll give anything. The, the, these uh, these hacks, uh, as we've seen in the probation scandal, they will these hacks will give anything to avoid working in the dreaded private sector, because they it's uh, it's it's a it, it's tough. It's it's brutal. It's uh, life is short, nasty, and brutish, as somebody said of life in general. But it's it's particularly sh short, nasty, and brutish in the dreaded private sector. Eight five seven says, but what? How? Wait, what about all the green jobs? Yeah, what? Yeah, what happened to all those green jobs? What happened to all those green jobs? One eight seven seven four six nine four three two two. Let's see. 603, durability of the recovery. That's like chances of recovery from Dr. Kevorkian. Does normal population growth include illegal aliens? <laughs> I think it does. 1-877-469-4322. Are you, have you stopped looking for work? Do you know somebody who has stopped looking? What are you, what are they, what are you or are they doing? Chris, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Howie. Hi. Uh, now, just talking about... You there? I think we lost Chris. Hold on. Thanks. Uh, sorry about that, Chris. Mac, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, What's Mac. What's going on? My name's Mac. I'm an unemployed American. I'm listening to your show. And, I mean, based on the stuff that you're saying about unemployment rate going up, and uh, we're all actually in the worst position, um, I, I would have to agree with that even from an unemployed perspective. 
How long has it been since you've worked, Mac? Since I've honestly worked? Yeah. Maybe about six years. Six years? Yeah. That's a long time. How do you make ends meet? I do American jobs. What is that? I work in, uh, you know, whether it's a restaurant or just the backbone of the country. You work in a restaurant? Yeah. How many, you work in the kitchen? Yeah. You must be one of the few English speakers in the kitchen. We is this an American time. job, we by the way? Time. What? It's a good, it's a good balance between the front of the house and the back of the house. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Mac. One eight seven seven four six nine four three two two. Wayne, you're next. I've heard people that, that yeah. are turned down for not the, they can't. Their kids have been turned down for jobs because they don't speak Portuguese or Spanish. They wanted to work in a kitchen. They said you can't. How are you going to get by? You can't. You're the only one here who doesn't speak Portuguese. Wayne, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Wayne. Thank you, Harry, for taking my, my call. A friend of mine uh, committed suicide uh, this past December the 28th. And what happened was he'd been working for the same company for about 15 years, a uh, full-time, excellent employee with excellent uh, work ethics. However, his, his work hours were cut back to uh, part-time status. And so for the past eight months, he was even trying to find other work to fill in, and he couldn't. 